Alright guys, well I got my wire cutting back and I got my punch holder stripper here. And this is my this is my die section. This piece of material will actually be doing the cutting. It's gonna cut this little hole and it's you see this profile, this little piece of metal here. Well that was actually wire cut out. You see, I, I laid it out with black magic marker, kind of, this is where I want you to cut. But these are, this is the actual slug. So, and wire cutting needs somewhere to start. It's just like a jigsaw. You need a hole to put the blade in, and then you start cutting. So, Right there, you kind of see the uh, that little wire line. That's about eight thou thick clearance. So the wire started in this hole, came out, cut it around, and then that block fell out. And then there's a little scallop from where the blade start or the wire started and it ended. So the wire has to do a second cut. It's called a skim cut. And it cleans out. And you see right there. That's where the wire started and stopped. That little different rusty line. But there's hard, like there is will be like a one or two tenth of an inch step there, and that's not enough to worry about. But other than that, it's pretty much a clean razor blade. So this is a 90 degree cutting edge and that is like a razor like that's cutting my finger now just giving it a little shave and there's finger bell dust anyway so that is going to actually cut the aluminum now there's going to be a punch that comes down and slides through that hole, blanking out the material. And this is the punch holder and it's a guide. So that one there is wire cut out as well. This one's a lot taller because I needed more guidance. So this one's going to be mounted somewhat. like that on parallel rails that I showed you earlier. Anyway, so now I have to uh, grind the punch that slips through this window. Right now, I've just got it rectangular. I actually have to grind these rads on the corners of the punch so it'll slide through. So. Here I have a, that's a, a precision height gauge, and it's called a Cadillac, and that's just the slang name for it. That off the surface table to each table, these are little tabletops, and they're exactly one inch separated. And then up on the top here, I got this is your ballpark number. You really work with the uh, vernier gauge. So I needed to go to three inch. So that tabletop is between the three and the four. I need to be 3.520. So I'm at three. And I 
quick gauge there says it's 522 and there's the 520. Now I want to be 1000 bigger than it so now what I do is I take this is an interrapid indicator it's pretty much one of the best you can buy and it measures in half thou increments so between the zero here and that's one thou each line is a half thou so I'm going to swing that over and bring it up against the height gauge and let the indicator go up on the table and then I set that indicator to zero. So I have to recalibrate my height gauge. And there's my zero. Now I want to set, this is called a diamond dresser. And this dresses radiuses, angles, whatever you need on a grinding wheel. So I got my grinding wheel here set up, ready to be, I dressed the bottom of it, so that's all dressed up, but now I need to sink a radius in the grinding wheel. And the height I need to be is one eighth of an inch, that's a one, these are one eighth rads or it's a quarter diameter. So now I bring the indicator over to the diamond and I have to set the diamond higher because it's an interior rad. So it's gonna drop, it's an interior rad on the grinding wheel. So it's gonna drop an exterior rad on the punch that I'm going to be grinding here. So I need to be a bigger rad than my indicator states. So from here you see I'm two thou, almost two and a half thou higher, which is good for me because the wheel's gonna wear out a little bit and that rad might get a little bigger, but I'll redress it and do a, a second cut after I do all my roughing cuts. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed.